Hello, my name is Kweko, I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing six benefits of magnesium. Now, magnesium is arguably one of the most abundant minerals in the body. Some estimates put it as the fourth most abundant mineral in the body. And it serves a variety of purposes. Key among them is that it serves as a cofactor in over 300 or so enzyme reactions or biochemical reactions in the body. Now, if you remember anything from your high school chemistry or biology, you remember that enzymes are chemicals that actually speed up chemical processes. Now, what cofactors do is that they serve to be these enzyme helpers so they make the enzymes they give the enzymes the ability to function so if you don't have these cofactors key of them being magnesium then a lot of the body's biochemical processes are inhibited and that leads to you not having optimal health first one is heart health now magnesium has been associated with reducing blood pressure and improving overall cardiovascular health now elevated blood pressure is arguably one of the most significant risk factors in developing cardiac disease so anything that helps to minimize or bring down your blood pressure is definitely a welcome idea now although studies show that magnesium's ability to reduce blood pressure is relatively modest you know in the grand scheme of things or in the big picture any value or any amount that you can reduce your blood pressure by significantly decreases your risk for cardiac disease down the line so it's definitely a welcome idea in the grand scheme of things so there was one particular study called the atherosclerosis risk in community study where they observed over 14,000 participants both white and african americans and male and female aged between 45 and 64 they followed them over several years and what they noticed was that people that had the highest amount of serum concentration of magnesium that they put at 0.88 millimoles per liter had a 38 percent lower risk of developing sudden cardiac death relative to the people that had the lowest concentrations of magnesium in their, in their serum, which was 0.75 millimoles per liter. Magnesium's ability to reduce blood pressure is significant enough for the FDA in 2022 to issue a qualified health claim for magnesium containing foods and some natural supplements to use the, the statement, consuming diets with adequate magnesium may reduce the risk of blood pressure or hypertension. The only caveat is that such foods and supplements must contain at least 84 milligrams of magnesium per serving and not more than 350 milligrams per serving. Number two, type two diabetes. Now diets high in magnesium has been associated with a significantly lower risk in type 2 diabetes most probably because magnesium plays a significant role in glucose or sugar metabolism inadequate magnesium levels a condition called hypomagnesemia has been associated with an increase in the risk for insulin resistance which almost always precede diabetes now to make matters even worse if you're already diabetic there's a tendency that you would excrete more magnesium from your urine you tend to pee out more magnesium and this leads to a vicious cycle where you excrete more magnesium and therefore you have relatively low magnesium that affects your insulin levels and then the cycle continues. Now a meta-analysis conducted on seven different studies involving over 200,000 participants, about 10,000 of whom were diabetic and who were followed over about six to 17 years, found that increasing magnesium intakes by about 100 milligrams per day led to a statistically significant reduction in the risk of diabetes by 15%. Number three, bone health. Now, anytime we talk of bone health, the number one mineral that comes into the mind is calcium, which is not wrong, which is very true. But that does not also mean that magnesium does not play a critical role in maintaining good, healthy bones. People with higher intakes of magnesium generally have a higher bone mineral density, which is key in preventing fractures and osteoporosis. Now, magnesium also affects the levels or concentration of a hormone called parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone plays a key role in maintaining adequate calcium levels in the blood. Magnesium also helps to regulate the amount of active form of vitamin D in the blood. And all these are crucial for optimum bone health. Now, there are studies to show that increasing magnesium intakes, either from food or from supplements, leads to a reduction in the risk of postmenopausal women developing fractures or osteoporosis. In other words, it increases their bone density such that their risk for fractures is minimized. Number four, migraines and headaches. Magnesium deficiency has been associated with certain factors that promote migraines and headaches, such as the release of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, as well as the constricting or tightening of blood vessels. People who experience migraine headaches generally have lower levels of serum and tissue magnesium than people who do not experience these headaches. The American Academy of Neurology and the American Headache Society acknowledges that magnesium may be beneficial in reducing or preventing migraines, but they do caution though, because they say that the, the amounts of magnesium that are usually 
helpful in treating headaches and migraines usually tends to be on the upper limit, usually around 500 and 600 milligrams per day. So they don't generally recommend people to just start taking magnesium for migraines, but to consult your physician first, because you don't want to end up in a situation where you're taking too much magnesium that leads to other problems. And also the lower doses may also not be effective. But of course, if you're under the care of your doctor, he'll be able to guide you as to what is the best dose to help minimize such headaches and migraine. Number five, anxiety and mood disorders. Magnesium plays a critical role in brain function. Therefore, when one is low, it tends to cause problems in terms of mood disorders as well as anxiety. Now, for starters, magnesium is thought to affect cortisol levels. Now, cortisol is a hormone that is associated with stress. So anytime you affect or you reduce the levels of cortisol, you reduce stress and consequently you reduce your anxiety. With respect to depression, one particular study found that uh, people given 500 milligrams of magnesium for at least eight weeks who were already deficient in magnesium led to their improvement in their mood or led to the improvement of their depressive symptoms. I just want to say that these were people who were magnesium deficient. They didn't have normal magnesium levels to begin with. So there is not a blanket statement that magnesium is a treatment or a cure for depression. Number six, sleep. Magnesium is thought to help with sleep disorders because it plays a critical role in some of the neurotransmitters that are involved in sleep. For ex one typical example is one called gamma immunobutyric acid or GABA for short. Now admittedly, the evidence that supports magnesium's use in sleep disorders is quite thin because a lot of these studies have been relatively small, but several key facts still remain. That number one, magnesium makes it easier to fall asleep, it improves sleep quality, and it reduces the symptoms of restless leg syndrome, which can interfere with a good night's sleep for most people. So there you go, high level overview of magnesium and its benefits on your screen now are other videos that I did on magnesium. I hope you enjoyed them as well. Take care, stay blessed, catch you on the next video.